Welcome. So I'm just getting started with this, so you'll have to uh, bear with me as I get my bearings and figure out what I'm looking at. And I'm trying to understand also the chat area. You come say hi, and then you got to go. Hi. Little ones over here. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, all right. So hi. Thank you all for coming tonight and joining us. We have miserable weather out, and so this is wonderful to be able to to stop and take a minute to tangle. And so I have some show and tell for you, and then I'm looking at my notes here that I have. I wrote down what I wanted to do. I have some show and tell. I want to do um, a few tangles with you, um, and then get your feedback. I see I have two viewers, and if you are able to chat, if you have questions, there should be a way, and I'm trying to look to see if I can tell you um, how to find it, but there should be a way to ask me questions, and I should be able to see them. Um, I don't know how to tell you how to do that, though. I'm sorry. But anyway, we will figure it out together with your help. Um, most of you probably know me. My name is Katie Abbott, and I'm a certified Zentangle teacher. Um, Happy New Year to those of you who I don't, who I haven't seen. I miss all of my tangling friends. Um, and so, okay, I told you about the question and answer. If anybody can figure out the question and answer, just put a even a test question in there, just so I can see if it's working. Uh, first, what I wanted to show everybody. I see we have two viewers. Yay! Um, so I wanted to start off by showing you a few things that I got for the holidays. And these were um, some presents that I asked for. Of course, I wanted art supplies. Um, and by the way, please let me know if you have trouble hearing me, because that's important for me to know if you have trouble seeing me. Uh, the video seems a little delayed to me. Um, so let me know. Give me those. Uh, that, that feedback. I see we have three viewers now. Welcome. I don't know who's here, but welcome, welcome. So the first thing that I received for holiday gifts is I got this really neat little koi traveling watercolor kit. And it's really cute. It has, um, it's just a small little kit. This is a, over here, this is a water brush. And I can just, if you say hi, you can see it. Come say hi. No, she doesn't want to say hi. Okay, um, but it's hi. it's called a. There she is. Hi. This is Mia. And she has to go to bed now. All right. So. Um, I'm showing them. Let me show. Them. So it says pocket field sketch guide. And I'm hoping that I can toss this in my bag. Um, and tangle on some of the Zentangle tiles since they can handle the watercolor. Another thing that I got is this art journaling magazine. And I'm not sure, I haven't even had a chance to look through it yet, but it looks really cool. And it has lots of interesting pictures, lots of interesting prompts, and um, a lot of of um, different things that I'm going to look through and see. I'm going to try and do some art journal. And then another thing, I think some of you have heard me talk about the jelly, but I got the round jelly. Good night. I got the round jelly, and when we were visiting my mom in Indiana, we we're able to make something like this. I don't know if you can see it or not. Hopefully you can see it okay. So I did the jelly print and then I drew rain both in black. Actually I did a mask. So I did a mask, masking fluid and then I drew around that with black and white. So this was fun. So I love my jelly. And I think those were the cool gifts that I received for the holidays. Let me put those out of the way. I see we have four viewers. 
Uh, if anybody can post a question, go ahead and try. There should be a little box maybe that says q and A. I'm not sure. Um, so you'll just have to let me know how things are going. So the next thing that I wanted to do, oh, and this will be recorded so you can watch it later as well. So I'll put the, the link up. Um, one of my New Year's resolutions was to start a gratitude practice. And that just means on as regular of a basis as I can to write down the things that I'm grateful for every day. And so I received a little journal from a friend of mine um, and I've just taken it, I have it by my bed at night with a pen and I just write down the date and I try and write up five things that I'm grateful for. Some days I don't do it, honestly. Some days it's easy. I've been doing it with my daughter Mia um, and she says things like I'm grateful for my dog, which is great. Um, and so I've been trying to do that, um, practicing gratitude. Um, are ways that some researchers have found enhances joy in your everyday life. And so it, it allows you to be um, thankful and happy for what you have, is the basic point. Um, and another thing that I wanted, so, oh, so here's one thing I'd like you to do. So right now, take a few seconds, get a piece of paper, and just write down a couple things that you're grateful for. Start the sentence by saying, I am grateful for fill in the blank. I'll give you a second to do that while I grab the next thing that I want to show you. And if you're able, if you want to share a couple of them, feel free to put them in the group chat. That way I can see them. Um, I don't see anything yet, so it may be hard for people to um, add things to the group chat. So another big accomplishment that I had this past year is that I completed my sketchbook project book that Lynn was so helpful in teaching us all about in October. And I'll see if this doesn't have a glare. I have it in a plastic sheet here. So it may be a little bit of a glare. I'll turn that down. So this was my cover. So this is a, these are actually color copies of my sketchbook because the actual sketchbook had to be mailed on the 15th. I'm going to take them out because it does look like there's a little bit of a glare. So this was my cover. And it was first aid for the soul. The next page. Remember who you wanted to be. And this piece on this side was a jelly print. And this piece over here was a kaleidoscope zentangle that I did. So I um, and hopefully I'll be able to teach this this year. It's a lot of fun. It's a nice technique. You essentially do a large piece, make photocopies of it, chop it up into little pieces, and then reassemble them into new creations. So that's a lot of fun. The next page, one of my favorite tangles, is upside down. That might be helpful to get it right side up. So this is Betweed, and there's a jelly print on the back here. You can't really see it all that well. That's Betweed as well. And it says, I use the Zentangle drawing method to quiet my mind, stay in the moment, and practice gratitude. And then I did another page that just says, one of my favorite thoughts, comparison is the thief of happiness, and I am enough, and what I should have written is, you are too. <laughs> Another page that I completed. This one's busy, so I'll see if I can get it. This was for those of you who came to class, I think it was July or August, and we used the bleeding tissue to backgrounds. I used the bleeding tissue as a background here. And then I just put a couple of quotes. So the first one says, surrender to what is, let go of what was, have faith in what will be. 
And then the, the saying on this side is, be happier with what is by letting go of how things should be. So if you can't notice, these are all things that help me. And so I thought, what's more me than the things that resonate with me? And if they can help somebody else, that's fantastic. And here's getting back to gratitude. See if I can get a little more light here. Hopefully you can see that. Um, this piece over here was I tangled on a piece of vellum in white marker and put watercolor behind it on the back. So it very it's very um, it almost looks illuminated. And then this quote says, "Soften into joy by practicing gratitude. Gratitude can transform common days into thanksgivings, turn routine jobs into joy, and change ordinary." opportunities into blessings. I'm sorry. The phone's ringing. Oh, it's the Abington School District. It probably means that school's canceled for tomorrow because of all the snow. Um, sorry about that. Um, next time, I'll remember to move the phone. So you guys are helping me already. Next page. This was a fun one. Did I mention the background on this one? If you can see it, um, I use the distress inks. And this paper, the sketchbook paper, it was very, very thin. And so I, when I tried to manipulate it much, it got very, um, it warped. And so I just, I tried to do as little as possible to the actual paper by adding water. I just stopped doing it. So this was just, I just took dry distress ink to make those backgrounds. All right, then I think we have this page which is a fun one. Um, see if I can... There we go. Not too bad. It shows up backwards for me, so I'm hoping that you guys can see. I see we have six people joining us. Hi! I don't know who's here, but hopefully you can send me an email afterwards and tell me you were there. Um, so the first part here says, trust yourself. And there's a little quote here that says, the quieter you become, the more you are able to hear. And that's a quote by Rumi. And to me, that helps me remember that sitting in silence is not such a bad thing. I tend to go, go, go. Um, and I don't want to be that way. And I don't want to pass that on to my daughter. And so this is a reminder to me that it's OK to sit in quiet. I find it hard sometimes. Um, but I want to practice that more this year. And this piece here is an embossed technique where I took a, um, a metal tool. I'm trying to get it so that you can see it without the glare. Um, and I impressed. So the white that you see is, are actually indentations in the paper. And then I went over the top of the paper with colored pencils. And so that's a fun technique, too. And this one says, intuition is not a single way of knowing. It's our ability to hold space for uncertainty and our willingness to trust the many ways we've developed knowledge and insight, including instinct, experience, faith, and reason. And that's a quote by Brene Brown. And if you're not familiar with Brene Brown, she has a couple of great TED Talks on vulnerability and shame. And she has an art journaling class that she's doing um, that I took part in this past fall. And there's a second part that I'm going to be doing in the spring. Um, and that was a lot of fun. And I enjoyed, I enjoyed that, that piece. And then the next one, one of my this was one of the first pages I completed. And as you can see, it's rain over here. And then there's a quote, and then I have the step out to rain in the inset. And it says, don't ask what the world needs. Ask what makes you come alive and go do it. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. And that's a quote by Howard Thurman. A couple more here that I'll share with you. There was one that didn't get copied. I didn't make didn't check all my pages after I dropped it off to get copies of, and I should have. This one's just a nice, it's another jelly print. Mooka, you'll recognize Mooka over here. And I did the step out for Inderella, another one of my favorite patterns. And I took the, the dark jelly print and I went over it with white marker. And then this is another kaleidoscope piece, which was cut up and reassembled, and the distress inks on the background. And this was a fun one. So this. I wanted it to be somewhat interactive. And so this was something where um, 
someone could make a copy of and blow it up, color it, and then hang it wherever they want to. And it says, take what you need, give what you can, and all the little tabs here that they can be cut are listed for people to tear off if they need it. So this was just a fun little thing that I thought it would be neat for people who were checking out the sketchbook that could do. All right, here's another nice one that I liked, a jelly over here. And this one was actually um, an apprentice tile that I did with the kids. And the quote just says, art is anything you can get away with. Another page. Um, this is the, the bleeding tissue in the background. I used pink, orange, and yellow, I think. And two kaleidoscope patterns. And then a quote um, that mindfulness means paying attention in a particular way, on purpose, in the present moment, and non-judgmentally. And then the little one up here is our intention creates our reality. And those, again, are reminders to me um, that the things that you think about are how you construct your reality and you want to be thinking positive things, you want to be thinking um, not, not letting your inner critic run wild. This one I think is one of my favorite ones that I did. So it's a jelly on this side and there's a quote by Picasso there that I'll read in a second but up here is one of the new tan tiles this is one of the new tan renaissance tiles that was released by Zentangle and I used the sepia pen and I also used black ink with it um, and a white charcoal pencil fabulous these are so much fun you can add highlights and lowlights um, there's a lot there's just a lot more depth that you can create with them and so that's what we were going to do tonight so we'll do that in February um, and right here in this little part I have um, a mindfulness technique to, um, and it's, it's called RAIN, and each letter stands for something. So the R is for you to recognize the feeling. A is to allow it to be as is without resisting. I is to investigate the emotion just as it is with kindness. Ask, what do I need right now? And N is to non-identify. The feeling is occurring within your awareness, but it no longer controls you. And then just a little note to say, remember, it takes practice. And the quote from Picasso, I'm sure you all have, have heard this one, art washes away from the soul the dust of everyday life. And this is an exercise we did in the last, in the October retreat that I really enjoyed, and it's our permission slips. And so this is where we're giving ourselves permission for whatever it is we need to do our creative work, to be as authentic as we can be. And so, for example, I have give yourself permission to make mistakes, create, be brave and afraid at the exact same time, quiet your inner critic, take a nap, I love taking naps, uh, have fun. This was a good one that I need to, to remember, is to let it go to voicemail. I don't have to get every single call that comes in. And then the last one here is to talk to, talk to yourself like you would talk to someone you love. And what that means is if, if something happens, our inner critic talks to us in a way that we would never talk to anybody else. And so be aware of that. And if, you know, if, if something happens and you're disappointed with yourself and it happened to somebody else, how would you respond to your friend in that way and talk to yourself in the same way? And then this one is just the little permission slip, redeemable at any time. And then a quote that I liked, what's for you will not pass you by. It's a nice reminder. All right, I see seven viewers. Hi, everybody. Um, again, not sure who's here. If there's a way, if there's a way for you to, to uh, add to the group chat, go ahead. I can see a chat bar on the side. So drop in, say hi if you can. That way I'll know who's here. Otherwise, just keep watching. We'll keep going. We're almost through here. Um, another jelly that I embellished with tangling. I figured I had to add my own pattern cuke over here. And then I did cadent and fangle, uh, drupe and ah, uh, and indirella. And this is a, a stamp, a rubber stamp that I just embellished with some tangles. 
And the quote says, We have to dare to be ourselves, however frightening or strange that self may prove to be. And then another page. This one is a, uh, was a black um, men Zendala that I used um, jelly. They were the metallic jelly roll pins on. And so the question is, what's worth doing even if you fail? And so another thought for me to remember. And then you are just fabulous and simply amazing, which of course, I think that goes without saying for all of you. That's how I feel about all of the people I've met through Zentangle. And then the last page of my book, I had um, a guide on one side of resources and links for all of the things that I referenced in my book. And I had one more final quote. The only unique contribution that we will ever make in this world will be born of our creativity. And that's another quote by Brene Brown. Um, and so that was a really interesting exercise for me to go through. Um, it was intimidating and it was hard to not have it be perfect, but I just went for it. And I just figured, you know what, it's better to have something out there. Um, I know that several of you also did sketchbooks and I've seen a couple of them and they're phenomenal. I can't wait for them to come on tour so we can go and check them out in Philadelphia. Hopefully, hopefully we'll get to see them. So, um, all right, so that's the sketchbook. Now, oh, so this is another thing I want to show you. And it's called an exploding box. I'm looking up because I have them right up here. Um, and I'm trying to figure out which one to show you first. I'll show you this one. So, what this is, is, I made it, by the way, so it's, let me put it together and then I'll take it apart for you to see. So, it's just this little box, okay, plain box, but when you open it up, it opens out, and you have three flaps, and then it's, glued together at the center. And my idea is to take tiles and put them on the different flaps um, so that they can show off our tiles. And let me show you another one. This one is the first one I made. I did the first one as a way of, of I was trying to do a year in review and I wanted, there's 12 flaps, and I wanted each flap to be a month in my life, and have, I was going to have pictures. So here's another um, just blank one. Again, I haven't gotten to actually do it yet. Um, these are really simple to make, and um, they're just fun. My daughter even did one. I'll show you hers. She, um, we have a little washi tape. Uh, obsession here in the house. So, and she of course loves dogs, so we have some dog washi tape. And she went through and added washi tape throughout all of her little, here she wrote cool, and just wrote cool apparently on every page because this is cool, right? And then, um, you know, so it was just fun for her to work on it's it, again, as I said, it's not a difficult project. Um, happy to show you how to do those. You can see I'm still working on mine. Hopefully, by the time I see you all in person, I'll have it completed. Put that back up so that I can get it out of my space here. I was going to use um, some little photo tab mounts to mount the tiles on the flaps. Um, because I thought that might be a little easier than using a lot of glue. Hang on, I dropped a bunch of stuff here. Coming right back up. Okay. This is hard. I miss hearing from you guys. So, anyway, I hope you're all doing well. I, I, I can talk, but those of you who know me know that I don't really like to sit and just ramble on. Okay, pop-up heart cards. So this was really fun. Diana Trout is a local author of um, a book called Journal Spilling, and she lives in Glenside, not far from me. I met her, I was teaching a Zentangle class at the Abington Library, and um, she took my class, and then I took her art journaling class at the library, and we've just really had a nice time sharing ideas. And she has a class 
um, post it online. It's only $10. It's really inexpensive. You get a 25-minute video, um, and it shows you how to make a card like this. So the first thing that she shows you how to do is how to weave paper. So here's an example of some paper that I did a weave for, and I took a jelly print and then weaved the black through it. This is the other side. And then I cut out the heart. I just cut out a part of the weave to glue it on the front of the card. And then it's a pop-up card. So this little heart inside pops out and it says Happy Valentine's Day. And I did bales on the inside there. Um, and of course I closed it before my white ink had dried and I got a little smudge so I have to figure that one out. This is another one that I did that I really like. I think I'll have to give this one to my husband, but it says Be Mine. And then on the inside, I did, hopefully you can see, quandary. And it says, I am not in a quandary about my love for you. And then I thought, oh, maybe I should it should have been over my love for you or for my love for you, the grammar piece, so I don't know. But this is really fun. If you want the link to her class, shoot me an email, and I'll be happy to um, send that to you. I did post it on the Abbott Artistry Facebook page and um, where else? And I can post it on my blog too. Um, okay, so now I want to show you, oh I'll show you one more thing. I forgot to pull it off the wall though. For the retreat in February that we're doing, we're going to do this cool pop-up butterfly and I thought I'd show a quick Show it to you really quickly. Ah, hold on. So this is um, like a, a one inch box frame. And this is the butterfly that we will try and just get it without too much glare for you. I'm sorry about that. Hopefully you can see the dimension. And again, we're taking an original piece, making copies cutting away um, to bring it um, more of this 3D image. My daughter calls it the pop-up butterfly. So that will be February 1st. Um, okay, so now I thought we could try and do a couple of tangles. Um, so here's the tricky part for me is that because this was last minute and we just decided to do this today, I don't have a second camera. Um, and so I'm going to have to use my web, the camera in my in my laptop here, and I'm going to have to fold it down so that it'll view the paper that I'm going to write on. So this may or may not work. Let's just just tell me, and then I can figure this out. Um, there's a way that I think I can mount my iPhone on a tripod to have it view down, but I don't quite know how to get it linked to my computer to show. So again, we're learning. So I'm just grabbing my stuff, and what I thought we'd do today, there's three things that I wanted to cover today. The first one is I thought I'd talk to you about a border, and this was a border that I used in my sketchbook, and it was going around the corner, taking mirror and going around the corner, and this was really, really fun. And then I thought I would also show you 21, which is a pattern that looks like this. And so this was another pattern that I just tried the other day, and it was a lot of fun. So, um, and then the third one is I thought we'd revisit Tripoli, which is one that we've done in the past, but I wanted to um, come back to. Yes, you can say hi. Hi. There you have it. This is Mia, the seven-year-old first grader, right? Who's about to go to bed? <laughs> no, I'm not. Okay. Well, I'm teaching. So this is why it's nice to come to get it out of the house to teach. So um, let me do, let me start, let's start with mirror. And again, I'm going to put my, I'm going to put my camera down and try and demonstrate this. And again, I see that we've got six viewers again. I don't know how this is, how this is working for you all. I hope that it's making some sense for you. Um, I'm hoping that somebody can see this, it's hard for me to know. So here we go, let's move you down to my paper. And that's Tripoli right here. 
and I'm going to try and move my All right, I'm going to try and see if this, if you guys can see this without, I'm going to turn this one off. Maybe that'll help. All right, again, just give me some feedback and I will try and figure out how to do this um, in a better way. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to do is draw, just like you start with mirror, you know how you draw two lines. Okay. 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 Sorry, we have an injury, a minor little scrape. All right, so oh, I don't even know if you guys can see this. Hopefully you can. All right, so I'm just drawing a curved line here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make a second curved line right here. And now with mirror, you're going to proceed just like you would with mirror normally. And we're going to draw another line along the outside. And another line here. And then we're going to need a second line on this part here. Okay. And ideally, what um, I think I would have done is I don't like having this line here, but that's okay. It'll be all right. So now with mirror, what we're going to do is now start mirror like we normally would, where we put the line right down the middle. And then we'll put the line going this way on this section. And then you do your V. So I like to start out with a V. And now you're just going to aura that V. And I may not do this whole thing just so that we don't take up a bunch of time. And again, I'm hoping that you can even see this. I will work on getting a tripod and a camera above me next time. All right, and I'm not turning my tile like I normally would since I'm using my sketchbook. So you go along and you do your lines here. Now I'll come back this way, add my lines. And then you'll start to do your lines here. And again, I like to start with a V. That just helps me get started. And then you aura your lines. I guess I should have some soothing music playing in the background, huh? So I'm just going to do part of this here. And I'll have the handout to give you when we meet next. And so you continue on both directions, and then you come in with your pencil and Give one side a nice dose of graphite here to start to add a little dimension and then come in with your blending stump and smooth that out. And so you can imagine how this could go all the way around your page make a beautiful border and in fact I did that with um, one of my sketchbook pages but I don't know that I that might be the page that didn't get copied but let me see because if I have a way of showing here it is right here 
So you can see what the page looks like with the border going all the way around. I can't tell which way it looks better. All right. So the next one that I wanted to show you is this one called 21. And it's really cool. Um, and this is on Tangle Patterns, by the way. If you want to get the step out, you can. And so I'm going to put you back down and show you 21 here. Hopefully you can see, and there's not too much of a glare. Um, I see my shadow is there. Let me see if I can move my light and make that less of a shadow. I was trying to make sure that you could see it well, but I didn't realize that there would also be a shadow here. Let's try it this way. All right, well, again, send me feedback. Let me know what works. So with 21, what you want to start with is you're going to start with um, just sort of a wavy line. And now what you need to do is you need to mirror that line. And um, one of my other students, Felicia, said that she had great success turning her paper around and then she could do the same stroke on the mirror. I'm going to try and just do it here. You're going to you're going to connect and you actually want your lines to come together and then come apart and come back together. And then you need to do that again. So you're going to come out here, come out and touch, come in, back out and touch, and back down. And now mirror that one again. And then I'm going to do one more over here. I think I'll just do maybe one. This is how the tangle shows it this way. So this is how you start it. And then you're going to draw within each pod a smaller pod. And you want to actually make this pattern fairly big at first. I drew it pretty small to begin with. It came out, and I'll show you what it looks like small. Let me grab my page here to show you what it looks like small. I've been trying to catch up in my tangle a day. So here it is, and you can see it's pretty small, but it still looks great. So here I'm working much bigger. And so I'm going to draw the little rice shapes in each of the little pods. And then once you have that, you're going to come through and you're going to do little arches. And I should be doing them upside down for you so that you can see them. So let's do it that way. So you want the arches to be curved slightly. And then just go through. And now what you're going to do is you're going to come and do an aura on in the the um, sides of the pods, I guess. On either side of your rice shape, you'll do this little aura. And hopefully it won't matter which direction I go, but because I think I can only go towards myself on this one. Um, and so you're just going to aura the little leaf pod here. Same thing on both sides, and you're just sort of bringing it down and around, and you'll see this will create the illusion when we shade it of it wrapping around the pod. And in some cases, I'm when it's when there's not a lot of space, I'm starting at the same point, but here I had more space, so I could make it come all the way. I could 
move my line down as I drew the little wavy line here. I'm trying to make these curved a little bit. Again, this pattern's name is 21, just the number 21. It's on tangle patterns under the T's. I'm not trying to be particularly neat or perfect about it. Remember, there are no mistakes. Alright, so now that I have all of those lines drawn, I'm going to come in and shade them. And so I'm going to come around and start giving some depth on either side of these rice shapes. And then I'll bring my blending stump out. Move it. Hopefully the pattern is starting to emerge a little bit. I'll lift it up a little bit for you. So again, here's the one I did not on camera here. And it just starts to look really cool, but the shading is crucial. So I'm just going to pop up and say hi. I see we have seven people. Whoa, sorry. Turn that off. I see we have seven people. Hi, everybody. I miss you. And then the last pattern, we have a, a few minutes here that I thought we could spend a little bit of time talking about Tripoli. Tripoli is like quandary. Um, I'll turn the light back on here. It looks like I feel like I'm kind of dark. Um, so Tripoli is like quandary. And um, it's small little triangles, though, instead of the rice shapes that quandary is. And I really like these patterns, but they're difficult, and I have to practice them quite a bit. Some people find that using a grid helps them. And so I wanted to come back to Tripoli today because there are so many ways to use this pattern um, that I, I just wanted to bring it to your awareness again. If, if Even if it has been part of your repertoire, it should become part again. Um, and the key part of this, and I'll show you what I've been able to do in my own journal, but um, what I find the most important part about Tripoli or Quandry, any pattern that does this similar um, type of feel, is that you actually want the spaces in between your pattern to be equal. It's not so much about getting the triangles equal. It's about getting the space between the triangles equal. So here's an example of Tripoli and the many ways that you can do Tripoli. And so you can see small. You can see here. I've, talked, I've highlighted more of the spaces. And this is one that Maria had on her, on her website. 
on the Zentangle website where you continue the spaces on so it almost looks like one of those um, oh I don't know those uh, electromagnetic balls or something that they have in physics shows um, but really it's about leaving consistent space between your designs they can be curved or straight edges this one I found online I was going to give as a handout that I really liked because it was curved I don't tend to do curved things I tend to try and make them more geometrical so I wanted to try this curved piece so you're going to be doing six triangles and what I'm hoping to show you is how to once you have your first set of six how to build out from there because I think that's where it's easy to get lost alright so I'm going to show you back down here to the paper hopefully you can see I apologize if you cannot let me know and I will make it better next time so you can see I did a little bit over here in this section I was practicing today but let's just start out with the basic six to, you know just to get ourselves going here and I want to have this guide in front of me I'll do them more geometric at first and then I will I'll try and do them curved so I'm going to start out and I have one triangle two triangles and that's the space that I want to try and leave consistent three triangles four and so here I already made an outstanding opportunity presenting suddenly or an whoops trying to write backwards here oops outstanding opportunity presenting suddenly let's try it again but you could do five and then what you do is you mirror your next triangle here and now what I want you to start envisioning is where you would go next and so if I did this for you you could see that my next set is over here and now I can actually create six triangles and now in order to start my next set I'm going to mirror any one of them just start somewhere you can even do two mirror two triangles and now see how I've got another set started right here so now I'm just looking at the spaces in between I'm trying to keep those spaces consistent. I'm not really worried too much about what my triangles look like. So here's another one. So let's say I wanted to go this direction with it. Let's mirror this triangle and this triangle. And now I'm going to turn my page just so it makes it a little easier for me to cover it and hide a piece and I'm hoping again that you can see this. So here we are. Here is there's the next set that I'm going to work on. So now I just have one more to add right here. Okay. And now I'm going to try and finish this one here. So I'm just going to continue to move around. When you're not sure where to go, mirror a couple of triangles. And then there's your next set. Come in, do it again you see that so let's build out again I'll do a couple more so here's the next set that I'm trying to do here one two three four five six let's come over here fill in this one over here so again you can see my triangles are not that uniform but I'm trying to focus on the space in between my triangles. Now, one cool thing about this is how you can shade these or, or you know, decorate these. Um, and there are so many cool ways. 
And so I'm going to show a couple different variations here. I'm going to make some big triangles just so you can see different ways of decorating or embellishing the insides. So one way is to do these little sort of tentacles with a dot at the end. Oh, I hope this is even showing here. I'm going to move back just a bit. Another way is sort of an opposite. Put some little, um, I don't know, what are these? Little bolts on the outsides. And what you'll actually do is connect the pieces together. So you'll go from one pattern, one triangle to the next. Another one, you could put a spiral on the inside. Another one. See, can you see all the variations to this? It's amazing. Um, this one I like. So fill in the corners. Do an aura. And then put a dot in the center. I'll, do, I'll show you two more and then I'm going to try and do it so that you can sort of see the pattern. Um, another way is to give a Y in the center and then just aura that pattern. And one more, you can make this, I don't know what this is, kind of a I don't know what that is. You could do it solid or you could do this little guy, leave a space in the center and fill in the sides. All these different variations with a single pattern. So I'm just going to do a, a simple one because I know I'm running out of time. Um, but what I want to show is just, just an idea of what it starts to look like once you use the same uh, embellishment throughout. So let's just use this this little one that I had here. Put a circle in the center and then fill in. So start to do the same embellishment for every triangle. Oops, missed up on that one. There you go. Lots of outstanding opportunities presenting suddenly. But I am enjoying myself. And I hope this is of some value to all of you. And you'll have to let me know if it's possible for you to do this with me or if you're just really only able to watch. And so you can see how the pattern is really developing. Put it back down here. I'll do a couple more. Then I better come back up. So again, here's some ideas. I'd love to see what uh, you come up with. Try the curved. Let me turn this. Um, I'd love to see what you're able to do. You can post it on the Abbott Artistry Facebook group. Um, if you're on Facebook, or you can just email it to me. I love to see them. Um, I really appreciate you guys trying this out with me. I see I have eight viewers. I don't know who's here, but I'm really glad you're here. Um, and I appreciate you guys. I, basically, I'm happy to continue doing these. I just need some feedback. I need to know how it works, if you can see, if you can hear. Um, obviously, I need to get a camera that'll look down on what I'm doing and I'll work on that as I mentioned this was spur of the moment we just decided to do it today and I didn't want to run out and look for a camera and a tripod in the snow so I'm, I'm happy to continue to try and build on this 
Um, this is something that I really would like to do more of. I know that there are several people who can't make it out on the specific days that I teach, um, and so I'd love to be able to offer classes online as well. Although I miss feedback, and I miss seeing what you all do, because the work that the students do is much better than mine, and, and usually far more creative and interesting than I like to see. So um, the work that I do, I do, I get pleasure and joy out of it too, so I didn't mean to have my inner critic go to town there. So again, uh, I'm working on my inner critic as well, so I hope you are too. Um, so please send me an email, let me know how this worked, how this didn't work. Um, I want to find my little, my little note list here because I had some other things that I wanted to make sure I went over with you. I'll be a little more organized maybe next time. Maybe not. <laughs> um, so this is everything. This is great. Um, so again, thank you all for being here. Um, send me an email with feedback, katie.abbott at comcast.net, k-a-t-y dot a-b-b-o-t-t -T at comcast.net. Love to hear from you. Send me pictures of what you're able to do. I'd love to see your triple E's. Um, and then we'll try and figure out how we can do this again. And um, I hope to see you all in person very soon. Uh, tangle on, be well, stay warm. It's very cold here in Philadelphia, so I hope you all stay warm. And thank you again for joining me. Oh, and I'll put the recording, um, I'll send you a link to the recording in case you want to watch it again. <laughs> all right, take care, everybody. Good night.